Hey everyone, Video Game Lover here. It's once again time to pull out the Wii Zapper because we are now going to look at the Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles and Dark Side Chronicles for the Nintendo Wii. Let's begin. Let's start off with Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. This game came out on November 13th of 2007 in the US. And unlike many Resident Evil games that are either survival horror games with tank controls and all that, this game kind of feels like the Survivor games, which is a light gun rail shooting game, except it's way more refined than Resident Evil Survivor that was on the PS1. Basically what this game is, it's a light gun rail shooter recapping the events of Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 0, and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, also adding a hidden new scenario retelling Umbrella's downfall as you play as Jill and Chris. So when you begin one of these scenarios, you get a choice of characters. In Resident Evil Zero, you get to play as either Rebecca or Billy. Resident Evil 1 Remake, Jill or Chris. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Jill and Carla. Which I think is really nice considering that some characters like Carlos hasn't appeared in a Resident Evil game at this time in nearly eight years. Billy just has been a forgotten character since he only appeared in Resident Evil Zero, so it's nice to see Billy and Carlos return for this one game. However though, there is one disappointment though. You can't choose any scenario in any order you want. No, you actually have to unlock them. So the first scenario is Resident Evil Zero. Once you beat that scenario, you end up playing the Resident Evil Remake scenario. Then you play, beat that one, you unlock the Resident Evil 3 Nemesis scenario. And in order to unlock the final scenario, you have to make sure you beat the Resident Evil 3 Nemesis scenario with at least an A rank. Why they did this, I had no idea. So yeah, this game is a little bit nitpicky when it comes to ranking because you need to have a lot of headshots. And this is one aspect that kind of turned off some people of Umbrella Chronicles. The enemies. They could be bullet spongy at times. They could take so many bullets to be taken now. Your best option is to headshot them, but it's very difficult. You have to be at the absolute tippy top edge of their head if you want a headshot. You have to be accurate to ensure that you get a headshot. If not, it won't work. So that's really one issue I really have with the game, is that, it, that the enemies take way too many bullets. And it just could drain your ammo. Thankfully, your handgun has unlimited ammo, while all your other weapons that you can find throughout the levels, not so much. Don't be surprised you run out of ammo, especially if you run into bosses. That has happened a lot, and my god, it can be very frustrating. Graphically, this game looks absolutely great for the Nintendo Wii, especially for an early Nintendo Wii game. I believe they pretty much use the same engine that they use for for the Resident Evil Remake on Nintendo GameCube, and it looks really nice on the Wii. The music, most of the songs are actually original, and I think they're very good, especially Wesker's theme that's in one of the Resident Evil Zero hidden missions, and his theme is very, very good. Well, like I mentioned about having good rankings, if you have good rankings, you actually unlock um, secret missions. You can play as Wesker, you can play as Rebecca in this certain scenario. It's really, really good. So the replayability is very high in this game, and even in multiple playthroughs, you're going to be able to find secrets. Now, how they have handled these scenarios and their recreations is a mixed bag. Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil Remake are pretty decent as far as remakes go and recreations of this game, but Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, oh my god, what the hell happened here? Basically, unlike Resident Evil 3 where you're in the clock tower and the park and all that, you're only in the streets of Raccoon City, and Nemesis doesn't even show up until the third part of the scenario, and his voice is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> And also, the final fight with Nemesis is very disappointing. No final mutation, no none of that. It's just him shirtless. Okay. Well, anyways, overall, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles was a pretty solid game for the most part. It has its flaws with the enemies being bullet spongies, and some of the scenarios weren't the absolute best recreations. But if you don't have time to play all the Resident Evil games, then this one's a good one. 
I find it weird that this game came out right when Mario Galaxy came out, and it kind of hampered some of the sale. It still did enough, selling about a million or two copies, but regardless, it's a pretty solid game. Now it's time to talk about Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. This game came out November 17, 2009. Coincidentally, the same time New Survivors Wii came out. Not a very wise decision once again. Seriously, what the hell is with this? You release a Resident Evil Chronicles game right next to a Mario game? What, you don't want your game to sell at all? Well, anyways, this time around, there's only three main scenarios. Operation Javier, which is actually takes place four years after the events of Resident Evil 2. The whole purpose of this scenario is explain why Jack Krauser decided to turn on Leon and pretty much kickstart the events of Resident Evil 4. The next one is Memories of a Lost City, which retells the events of Resident Evil 2. What makes this scenario very interesting is that this is the first and only time in franchise history that Claire and Ada Wong are in the exact same room and talking to each other. It's the only time ever in this franchise that this actually happens, which I think is really cool. Game of Oblivion is the Resident Evil Co-Veronica scenario, which is really nice to see Steve Bernstein back, and this time, nowhere near as annoying as how he was in Co-Veronica. Like the previous game, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles has multiple paths and secrets that make the game more replayable. Although this game does feel like Umbrella Chronicles, they made some tweaks. For one, it's way easier to headshot enemies this time around. They don't feel as bullet spongy as they were in the first game, so headshots are much easier. This game also has a couple new weapons, as well as letting you keep four weapons at a time and letting you switch them at any time, which Umbrella Chronicles didn't have. Now, the scenarios are handled very well, and they did a great job recreating Resident Evil 2 and Veronica. Despite them being only just three scenarios, each one of them has multiple levels. For example, the RE2 scenario, I believe, has eight levels, while the Kovaranga scenario has up to seven levels. So, it's definitely, overall, much longer than Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. The graphically like Umbrella Chronicles, it looks phenomenal on the Wii, with great details and character design. The music, however, takes a hit. I don't feel like the music is as memorable as Umbrella Chronicles. Overall, I think Dark Side Chronicles is the much superior game, but I think both are still great on their own right. If you don't have the time to play through every Resident Evil game from Resident Evil 1 all the way to like Code Veronica, then this is a good way to catch up into the series. These two games also had a PS3 release in 2012 with better graphics, but it was only released physically in Japan while in the US it was only released digital. However though you just import it, they work fine. Overall, pick these games up on the Nintendo Wii. They're some of the best rail shooting games on the Wii. And they're starting to go a little bit pricey right now, so you better get them now. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. This is Video Game Lover 58, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.